October 3rd, 1863, Washington, D.C. President Abraham Lincoln delivers a proclamation making the fourth Thursday in November a national day of Thanksgiving. This came after major Union victories at Gettysburg and Vicksburg, but also because through it all, he's somehow been able to keep the Union together and flourishing. Not an easy task in the midst of civil war. He basically says, there's a hell of a lot to be thankful for, so damn it, can we just be thankful for one day? 700 miles away though, in Georgia's Andersonville prison, Union captives have very little to be thankful for. Food is scarce, and the only water they can rely on is from a small stream that runs through the center of camp, but it's contaminated with food waste, garbage, and human excrement. Well, why not just boil the water, you may ask? Great idea, except Andersonville is essentially an open field with walls around it, so gathering wood to build a fire is nearly impossible. Then, you've got the roving gangs that'll kick your ass and steal all your sh a lack of protection from the elements, and the unrelenting Georgian sun that beats down on you from May to October. To deal with these conditions and to have some kind of hope when there really isn't any, many Union captives at Andersonville turned to faith. Prayer became a powerful tool in the prison, which makes what happened next pretty freaking weird. In August of 1864, after two months of searing heat and the skyrocketing death toll, a giant thunderhead appeared. Witnesses remarked on its distinct mountainous shape and gunmetal blue color. They watched as it crawled over the prison, then seemed to stop directly above them. Moments later, there was a loud explosion, like cannon fire, and a bright flash of lightning. It struck the ground, filling the air with earth and steam, followed by a torrent of water gushing up from the hole. The lightning had struck an underground stream that now bubbled up at about 10 gallons per minute, giving the prisoners much needed access to a consistent source of clean water. Believing it was an act of God, the site almost immediately became known as Providence Spring, and you can still see it today at the Andersonville National Historic Site. So what do you think? Act of God or pure coincidence? Or maybe just a legend created after some guy was digging and accidentally found the spring? Let us know in the comments and be sure to check out Raider Red's new Snapchat Discover channel for stories you won't see anywhere else. I'm Christopher Pilney.